Hello, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to present my recent work um, on efficient protection of past sensitive security. And this is a joint work done by several researchers from Georgia Tech, including myself, Chen Xiong Qian, uh, Bill Harris, Tesu Kim, and uh, Wen Lee, as well as uh, uh, Chen Yu Song from uh, UC Riverside. So, uh, what is a control flow? So control flow is the order of instructions that being executed by the program. And uh, ideally, there are only a limited set of valid transitions that's being desired by the developer itself. Um, however, through a control flow hijacking attacks, the attackers can actually change the control transfer to some of the control locations that, that, that is not being desired by the developers. For example, uh, what they need to do is basically exploit a vulnerability that resides in the program and change the control trans uh, change the control transfer to some code segments of their control for example such as shell code or um, um, or instructions that resides in the binary itself uh, such as return to libc attacks so obviously why do we care about these kind of um, situations um, because Obviously, there has been a long history between the battle between uh, of the battle between attackers and defenders in terms of control flow hijacking attacks. Um, as you can see, some of them are very, uh, really fundamental and should be really familiar to everyone, um, such as um, uh, um, stack smashing or buffer overflow attacks. While on the other hand, for the defense mechanisms, there can be uh, um, there are a lot of um, Familiar things that you can see, for example, like the stack cookies, stack canaries, shadow stacks, ASR, and so on. And obviously, there have been a lot of uh, publications uh, throughout the years on this topic. And as you can see, even for the most uh, straightforward uh, buffer overflow, buffer uh, buffer vulnerabilities, that that is considered to be the most relevant ones related to control flow hijacking attacks. Developers still make mistakes about these buffer errors, and the number has been increasing in the uh, last uh, few years. So one of the proposed mechanisms against these kind of uh, control flow hijacking attacks is uh, control flow integrity, which is CFI, in short, CFI. Uh, CFI is a lightweight runtime enforcement that tries to detect these kind of um, control flow hijacking attacks by using the pre-computed valid sets through points to analysis, static points to analysis. But obviously, there's some limitations behind it, which is the over-approximation that they have, to inf uh, they have to enforce in order to provide soundness and reduce the false positive rate. Um, so just to, uh, so for the motivating example that we use for our current work, um, this is the example, this is a source code, small source code that tries to mimic the uh, servers by uh, keep accepting the requests from users. And just to basically walk through the source code, uh, we have uh, within the while loop, it had, it, uh, this, uh, this code tries to pass the request from the uh, users. And based on the identity, it assigns the handler function pointer to either privileged or non-privileged functions. And it strips, uh, and then it strips arguments that is parsed from the users, and then it's, uh, and then it calls the indirect uh, function pointer handler to launch the request. From the stack point of view, however, as we uh, notice that in the source code, there's a there's a buffer overflow vulnerability that resides in the source code itself by the strip args functions, and thus from the stack point of view. Um, the handler can actually be overridden by the uh, attackers. And thus, it can be pointed to uh, any code segments um, that is desired by the attacker themselves, such as shellcode, libc, or privileged or non-privileged functions. So the limitation behind traditional CF uh, control flow integrity uh, mechanisms is obvious, because they tries to compute the value transfer sets at each location, each uh, at each tra uh, control transfer locations. And because they lack the dynamic information, they cannot reason about whether the if branch has been taken or the else branch has been taken at dynamic uh, at runtime. And thus, when they 
when they consider about the point, uh, valid points to set of the handler fun uh, a function pointer, they consider both the privileged and unprivileged function as valid, uh, valid targets. So recently there has been a, a CFI mechanism called uh, per input CFI, or in short, PI CFI, which relies on static analysis um, for soundness and instrumentation as well. But on the other hand, it tries to enable the valid target sets based on execution history of the address that has been taken. And thus, it uses the dynamic information, such as the uh, uh, execution, execution history, to um, try to um, basically try to reduce the over, over approximation problem that, that has resides in the uh, CFI mechanisms. So what I mean by uh, enabling the address taken based on his, uh, execution history is that if the if, uh, if the if branch has been taken, only the privileged function uh, address will be activated. And thus, when we reach the handler function pointer, only the privileged function address will be within the valid sets. However, there are some uh, limitations for that mechanisms as well. For example, once the transfer targets has been enabled, uh, they cannot be eliminated from the valid sets. So what I mean by this is that, uh, for, the, for example, in the first loop, the if branch has been taken, and thus the privilege function address will be within the valid sets. However, for the second, for the second loop, uh, if the else branch is taken, uh, because the privilege address will, be, will still be resides in the uh, valid target sets of handler, both the privilege and unprivileged functions address will be within the valid sets, and thus that that reduces uh, that reduces the accuracy of pi CFI to be the uh, normal level of uh, CFI mechanisms. So in this current work, we propose a mechanism called uh, pass sensitive CFI, and we call it PityPad for our implementation, and. Basically, at each control, what we do is that at each control transfer, we try to verify based on the points to analysis of whole execution path. So what I mean by whole execution path is that for the first loop, if the L, if the if branch has been taken, only the privilege function address will be within the valid sets. While on the other hand, in the second loop, if the else branch has been taken, because the handler will be rewritten. Um, the handler value will be rewritten by the unprivileged function in the source code. We consider only the unprivileged function as valid in the second round of the loop. So some of the assumptions that we need to make before we dig into the uh, like the details of the current project. Um, so first of all, the current approach only examines the control security, meaning that we do not tackle any uh, non-control data uh, within the current work. And second. Uh, it is secondly, it is not a memory safety solution, so we do not as and we do not protect any memory um, memory being over as any other memory safety solutions that have been proposed. So there are some challenges that we need to uh, tackle in the current work. First of all, we need to uh, be able to find a way to collect the executed passing information and share for the points to analysis efficiently, in an efficient way. And also the trace information that, that has been collected cannot be tempered by the attackers easily, otherwise it will lose the meaning of the whole uh, defense mechanisms. While at the same time, we need some uh, points to, we need some analysis that can compute the points to relation online both efficiently and precisely instead of the static points to analysis that we described before. So uh, to solve these problems, uh, we have we use two uh, solu uh, we use two uh, approaches. First, uh, we use Intel PT, which is a hardware feature provided by Intel uh, to collect the trace and protect it from attackers being uh, uh, from attackers modifying the trace. While at the second time, we uh, we design the incremental online points to analysis, uh, which we'll describe later. So uh, just. Uh, just to give a background of Intel PT, it is a low overhead commodity hardware that uh, tries to collect uh, the instruction trace while the program is running on the hardware level. And the packets 
that generated by Intel PT is highly compressed to save bandwidth. And the reason we chose Intel PT is pretty obvious. Um, so based on our understanding, that's the only uh, efficient way enabled by the hardware to share the uh, uh, execution trace to the process. While at the same time, because the traces has been collected in the kernel, in the kernel space and written or transferred directly from the hardware itself, it is, it, we assume that it has been protected um, from the attackers. Um, on the other hand, we have the incremental points to analysis, which takes the LVM RR of the target program, as well as the metadata of mapping between RR and binary um, as input. And at runtime, when the execution trace has been provided, we try uh, the incremental points to analysis tries to update the points to relation on a single execution pass based on the trace that has been shared. Um, there are several things that differentiate our analysis with the traditional uh, points to na static points to analysis. First of all, as we said, static points to analysis reason about all passes for soundness because they lack the dynamic information. And, and as in the previous example, both the if branch and else branch will be reasoned and will be included in the uh, valid points to set at transfer locations. Well, for the current pro uh, for the current approach with our analysis, we only reason about the points to relation on a single pass thanks to the uh, Intel PT feature that we have. And also, we also mean for our analysis, we also maintain a re we also reason about a shadow cost stack of instructions being executed, and thus we do not reason we do not. We, whenever a variable leaves the current uh, call context uh, scope, we do not uh, reason about those variables anymore, and thus we tries to perform some perfor uh, precise enforcement um, uh, efficiently. And last but not least, our um, precise info enforcement is uh, done only based on the control data itself, which is the execution trace. So for the current PDPAD system, uh, we have two modules. First one is the monitor module, which basically is a kernel space driver for PT and shares, uh, it tries to share the branch taken by the process with the analyzer. The second part is the analyzer module, which basically use a re tries it, which is a which is a user space module that tries to read from the execution trace from the monitor module and updates the points to relations based on the trace. So just to walk through a working example or procedure, the, pro uh, the program itself runs while the trace are being collected by the hardware itself. And when the program, whenever a program reaches a, a critical uh, sensitive sy system call, it got intercepted by the monitor module before uh, any, any uh, severe damage can be uh, done on the system. And the monitor module will uh, signal the analyzer to, um, or will w actually wait for the analyzer to um, finish its points to analysis um, computation. And when when the results come, the analyzer will notify the driver whether it, there are any uh, invalid points to relations that has been resides in the execution trace. And only when the valid when only when the valid results come back, the monitor driver will actually, uh, will restore the process and let it continue uh, through the syscall. So basically, we're syncing at the syscall level. Um, there are some uh, there are some challenging language features that we need to tackle uh, for the current project in order to apply for um, all the test benchmarks that we did. So first of all, uh, we have a uh, we, ha we need to handle the signal handling. And because of the nature of LVM IR, we can see that there is, uh, there in the source code, we can see that uh, when, the signal, when the signal has been registered, and as well as when the signal handler has been uh, registered in the function. And thus, we can handle the signal handling functions uh, by our analysis module. Well, at the same time, for set jump and long jump situation, and 
again, due to the nature of LVMIR, we, ha we know when the set jump as well as the uh, buffer has been registered. And whenever we see a long jump with the buffer being registered, we just need to match whether the buffer points to the same object and see if it is, uh, if it is actually returning to the uh, set jump itself. And thus, we also maintain a one-on-one -on -one mapping between set jump and long jump. So for the, for the exception handling part, um, we can see that uh, we, can, we can find out the try block within the source code. And whenever we make this try block, we just need to record the natural fall through address as well as the landing pad of the try block, which is the uh, catch block. And thus, uh, we, handles the uh, we handles the exception handling in our analysis module. So there are several optimizations that we need to do for our analysis in order to achieve reasonable overhead. Um, first of all, as, we, as I said before, we only reason about the points to relations within the call stack. And whenever an object leaves the current scope of the call stack, we, uh, we just ignore it. Um, and instead of keeping, keep copying around the points to relationship that we need to maintain. Well, at the same time, we also maintain the current uh, executing IR blocks along with the execution to avoid decoding of PT traces and translation from the binary address to IR. And last but not least, we also uh, perform some um, optimizations on the analysis which we consider really important to reduce the overhead. Uh, we, so, uh, so basically, we only analyze the control relevant functions which, uh, or instructions. And what I mean by control relevant functions and instructions is that any function or instruction that tries to manipulate the code pointer in the source code. So there's, uh, for the evaluation, there are several uh, significant or important questions that we need to answer. First of all, are there any benign applications satisfying the past sensitive CFI less susceptible to control flow hijacking attacks. And also for the malicious applications, are there any, um, do they actually satisfy the current solution um, if, they, if they failed the uh, weaker CFI mechanisms before? And last but not least, can we actually achieve the path sensitive CFI efficiently? And what is what will be the overhead? So based on our analysis, um, uh, we find that uh, for the forward edge, meaning that the indirect call or indirect jump, our current solutions maintains uh, on average uh, a 95%, more than 95% of our uh, control transfer locations through our mechanisms maintains a single uh, valid points to sets, meaning that uh, at each control transfer location, we can 95% of the locations only has one valid target, uh, valid targets throughout the execution. Well, on the other hand, for Pi CFI that we described before, they maintain on average uh, around 15, uh, 15 valid points to sets at each control transfer location. Well, at the same time, as we can see, there's some um, inaccuracy going on for both approach, including our approach and Pi CFI. This is because um, uh, the current approach does not reason about the uh, uh, function pointers within the vector, and this is this is definitely due to the nature of PT uh, Intel PT because it only collects the execution trace instead of collecting any data such as the index to the uh, array, so that we can precisely reason about whether a, a which in, a which um, function pointer within the array will be um, fetched and used throughout the execution. So we also, uh, for the for evaluation, we also try to um, run through the right testing benchmark, which, which contains various vulnerabilities that can be exploited to hijack control uh, flow. And based on our results uh, for all the 264 benchmarks that can be compiled in our testing environment, we passed all of them, meaning that we can actually detect all the control flow hijacking attacks provided by the right benchmark. And last but not least, uh, the performance overhead. So on average, we can see that our solution consistently provides a, a consistently incurs a higher 
performance overhead than uh, that of high CFI. And this, uh, this um, with an average of 12% for our solution, while Pi CFI maintains three, around 3%. Um, this is due to the nature of our, our points to analysis. Um, instead of using some approximate heuristic, um, like what they did for Pi, C, uh, Pi CFI, our solutions are actually reasons precisely about all the points to relations throughout the execution, and that's that's the main reason uh, why our overhead is a, a big uh, bigger than what they expected. Um, also, uh, also uh, 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 the performance overhead also related with the number of um, uh, child process or threat that we need to handle throughout the execution itself. Uh, so there are some limitations, obviously, for the current work. First of all, we do not reason about non-controlled data corruptions, and thus we cannot detect any of the attacks that that's related with the data uh, data corruption. And also, as we said uh, in the in the previous slides before, uh, we do not reason about the field sensitiveness of points to analysis for the array itself, and this is due to the uh, nature of Intel PT hardware, which doesn't provide any uh, data data that's related with the index for array. And also, our performance might not be ideal as a, a CFI solution, which usually, uh, based on all the previous works, usually they increase uh, around 5% of overhead for CFI solutions. So in conclusion, we, we define the path-sensitive CFI and tries to deploy a practical mechanisms for enforcement of uh, the sensitive CFI design and we show that uh, we, our solutions are strictly stronger provide strictly stronger guarantees than uh, other uh, CFI mechanisms that has been proposed before with 95% uh, uh, of uh, uh, cases where our control transfer locations only points to one target um, per location and also we uh, we had a, a acceptable runtime overhead in security uh, critical settings and that's it Thank you. Hi, uh, Petros Meñares, Google Brain. Um, you mentioned in your talk that your solution doesn't deal with more traditional spatial or temporal memory safety. Um, those have their own solutions. In some cases, they require instrumentation, either of the binary or of the source. Have you figured out how your solution composes with those solutions, which are also security critical? Um, so obviously, the, uh, we consider ourselves as a control flow integrity mechanism, which doesn't provide any memory safety issues. So, um, so for example, for the there are some actually some um, uh, some previous studies that, uh, so for example, propose the co pointer integrity, which tries to protect the co pointer through memory safety solutions. Uh, we consider themselves as um, our approach as, and their approach as complementary to each other because um, their approach requires the instrumentation of the binary, while on the other hand, we do not uh, do any instrumentation at all. But are they compatible? Can you use them at the same time? Oh, are they compatible? Um, I think we do not interfere with each other. As, as I said, um, the... Um, I haven't tested myself in terms of applying both on the same binary or benchmark, but uh, I would guess um, we do not interfere with each other because they're doing their way of using instrumentation, while at the same time, we do not do any instrumentation at all. Uh, I'm Priyam from Purdue. So, nice work. Uh, I have two simple questions. Mm -hmm. uh, first one, it's slide five. You said it's a lightweight solution, but I guess your solution still needs static analysis, right? Yes. Uh, what do you mean by uh, lightweight? What, what, uh, uh, can you say yeah. that again? Yeah. Like you said your solution is lightweight. Uh -huh. uh, so i just uh, wondering, uh, what, uh, what do you mean by lightweight? Um, so uh, lightweight means that, uh, so usually the CFI solution is usually in curious around 5% of overhead. Mm -hmm. While at the same time, um, we can see there's an obvious trade-off between our approach and uh, existing CFI solutions. We provide uh, better security guarantees in terms of the points to sets that at runtime, 
Well, on the other hand, we increase um, moderate, um, uh, like, um, overhead um, compared with uh, relatively high overhead compared with uh, what has been proposed in previous CFI solutions. Okay, my second question is that uh, you are collecting PT information, and what kind of PT packets you are collecting, like TIP, TNT, or? Uh, we are we are only collecting the TNT packets, uh, TIP packets, and uh, FUP, TIP PGE, and TIP PGD. Okay, thank you. Yeah. If we don't have further questions, let's thank the speaker again.